Imagine you got home early one day and you turned on Netflix and you wanted to watch a horror film. And there you saw a film about an American lady who moved to the Gambia. And you know what? At first everything was okay, but she predicted she had a stalker. She was going around all over the world telling people that somebody was stalking her and somebody wanted to poison her and nobody believed her. Some folks could have even thought she was crazy. Then two months later, she dies. Well, you will look at the film, you will say it's well orchestrated, well executed, well written, bravo. But then what if I told you it's not a movie? It's not a movie script. There are no actors. It's the truth because that's exactly what happened. Unfortunately, even Hollywood script writers couldn't make up what we're about to talk about. How? Oh! Rewind! Today, we're talking about the life of Anja Africa, also known as Andrea Martin. From her accent, it seems like she moved from the East Coast, most notably New York, to come to the Gambia. She was excited. She even dressed in the African garb. She seemed to be a strong spiritual person who loved the community. So that's why she came to Gambia, like so many other women. And of course, I've always told you on this channel, ladies, that coming to Africa by yourself might not be the best idea. But she came anyway, and she was really there fellowshipping with the community. Until one day, she started to deal with the new man that she felt she was vibing with. Now, let me stop the show there. She talked about the fact that whenever she came to the Gambia, that she felt that somebody was watching her. Let's check it out. A lot of it is related to single women in the Gambia. So first, let me give you a little just preview of what happens when you come to Gambia single, okay? You may have it in your mind that you're not trying to date anyone. You just come in here to live your best life. Well, honey, from the time you get your feet on the ground, and I'm talking from the airport, people already have their eyes on you, okay? They know what area you're going to. It's been reported where you're going to be living. Um, there'll be that one person that thinks, well, I'm going to be the person to get that individual because that's going to be my cash cow, cash cow, cash cow. That's interesting. And this is a warning that she put out in the Gambia. But let's continue. She started dating this man, a younger man, I'm assuming. Then she found out that something was off with him. And this is why she said this. It only hit me today because I was like, I have a stalker. I have a stalker and I haven't told anyone. And it's not healthy. So let me just tell y'all what's going on. Okay, so I was seeing someone and I thought us meeting was like, you know, a spiritual thing. The bond, like we connected, we, we have good conversation, but there was something about this individual, but I could not put my finger on what it was. But, you know, I figured you're getting the note, take it, you know, keep him at a distance, but get to know him. So the more I get to know him, my spiritual abilities are coming in at the same time. So now I'm starting to have divinations. And when I tell you what I saw, y'all going to be like, uh-uh. I saw this individual um, dealing with same-sex orgies. I saw this individual in different relationships. I saw a lot of children around. And I mean, everything I'm seeing is nude. Okay. So now I'm thinking, hold up. This individual's in a cult. This is not no, I'm just a normal person. This is a foot soldier for the devil, devil, devil. The scary thing is that she felt that he was involved in something else that was shady. We need to wrap this situation up. He says, what do you mean? I said, there are such things as soulmates, twin spirits, and karmics. I said, you are a karmic. And he was like, what? I said, yeah, you are probably someone who killed me in a past life. He was just like, why would you say that? I said, because I see exactly who you are. I said, you're a demon. Straight up, you a demon. I see who you are. I see your sexual preferences. I see your be. I see all of you. It's in the tiles. When I do what a divination, I can see you. So me seeing who you are knows that I don't want nobody like you around me. 
I know what my journey is and my journey does not include anybody energy harvesting off of me, trying to be part of my legacy, trying to steal what I'm trying to build. I don't want nobody like that around me. And he was so hurt. When I tell you his eyes filled up, they got real bloodshot red. And he was like, I, I can't, I, I can't believe I'm hearing this right now. I, I'm just in shock. I said, well, I'm going to need you to process that because I stand by what I say. Let me tell you all something. Do you know every time this man talked that that white dog flipped on his back? What? That's right. She felt that he was in the cold. And when she tried to break up with him, well, this is what he started doing. They would even have people that try to get you to drink or eat from them. Let me tell you. I don't eat from places no more. Ever since I realized that this individual was stalking me, I said, you know what? I don't see him, but I know he is watching me. And sure enough, what he was doing was hiring the people that are working around me. There's three houses being constructed around me. He's hiring the construction workers and having them watch me and report when I am leaving, when I'm coming back. When I would go to walk in the woods, I would feel like someone is following me. Sure enough, he's telling these people when I go on the beach that own the restaurants, look and see where she's going. Look and see who she's talking to. Mind you, I'm always alone. So that's probably not the best thing either. I know everybody, but I move by myself. So this is more than somebody. You will have people latch onto you and they will harvest energy from you. But stop the show. She had also talked about this on her channel before, about the domestic violence that goes on in the Gambia towards women from the diaspora. Greetings, family. So I'm here today to talk about uh, the domestic violence that is taking place on the continent that no one seems to be talking about. A lot of folks come on talking about relationships and dating on the continent. But there are situations where sisters are coming over here and dating Gambian men and realizing that they not, they're not who they thought they were, okay? So that representative has left the building. After, uh, I guess, a few days, weeks, they find out that the individual that they're with is possessive, unstable, physically aggressive. Um, these individuals, when they are told they no longer want to see these men, are being abused. These men are forcing their way into their compounds, into their homes, and no one's stopping them. Because the logic is when you get involved with somebody that that person now sort of possesses you or has access to you whenever they want. Not trying to say I told you so or anything, but this is serious business. Anyways, she felt that somebody was watching her wherever she went. She felt that also somebody might be poisoning her food. And she kept on telling people about this. She kept on talking about the issues that was going on in the Gambia. But I want to go back to this stream because she was still living and she wasn't in so much a fear of her life. She felt that she could make it. But she did talk about another sister that died unexpectedly and her name was Audrey Davis. There was one sister here. I didn't even know her, but in a way I did because it seemed like every place I had ever been and did a video, this sister was doing videos the same way. So we was like really had a lot in common, but I didn't know her. Her name was Audrey Davis. So all I hear is this sister is supposed to be getting married in one week. All of a sudden, the sister turns up dead. She's 54 years old. How? From what I heard, she didn't have any health problems, computer equipment. She's buying land and chickens. Her name was Audrey Davis. And I believe the channel she had was Soul Star. Soul Star healing, something like that. So then I started to go and look and find out who Audrey Davis was. She was a very beautiful and attractive lady. Here is Audrey Davis when she was living. Hey everybody, welcome to the Solar Sistar channel. It's your girl Solar Sistar coming to you once again with another video. 
Guys, I wanted to come on here and just share with you a little information about um, the plans that I have for the land that was recently purchased in the village. Um, before we move forward, though, if you would, go ahead, thumbs up the video, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel, hit the notification bell if you'd like to be made aware of upcoming videos, and feel free to share with anyone you think might benefit. So, guys... I mentioned in the video um, entitled what's, going, what's Been Going On Lately that um, there was some land that was purchased in the village. Uh, we actually demarcated that land last week. That was hilarious. There was a little short video um, showing some of that, but the land is beautiful, um, so peaceful. She was getting ready to get married to a younger Gamian man, but let's go back to see what Anja Africa said what happened with that. So I ended up just doing a post and, you know, a couple of other things for the sister. And then we ended up talking to her best friend on the phone. We get on the phone with the best friend and the best friend says to me, Andrea, did you know her? And I said, no, but I feel like that could have been me. I don't need to know her. So let me say, yes, that's my sister. Okay. So she said, well, you know, this, the husband told me an odd story. I said, what husband? The man she's supposed to marry. She said he was mad because he was calling the family, telling the family in the States, y'all are too selfish. Why won't you send for her body so I can accompany the body back to the States? Do y'all hear this? All the man had to say to the family, he is Gambian. Why haven't you sent for her body yet so I can come back with the coffin? That's what he had to say to the family. So when I talk to the sister now, the sister says to me, the, the girl, her friend, she says, um, do you know how she died? I said, I don't know, but I feel like it had something to do with her heart. And she said, Why, how do you know that? I said, what do you mean? How do I know? She said, the husband called me, the fiance, and said he had to jump up and pee and go to the bathroom. And when he came back, she was having a heart attack. Is that not what happened to me when I ran to the bathroom? I said, okay, I'll see what time it is. She's trying to tell me something. So she's going to communicate with me again. Then another time, so we had that conversation. We talked about, you know, organizing, talking to the rest of the family to see if we could put the clues together. About a week later, I have another dream where the sister comes to me and she shoves a plate of food in my stomach so hard that the pain woke me up out my sleep. And I said, whoa, sis, like, you know, I'm new to this. I'm gonna need you to kind of be a little easy with me, but I get it. So I believe that the sister was poisoned, okay? She was poisoned and all these different stories that this fiance is telling to people is because he is the one responsible for it. So fast forward, he now has her land. He had the house that she paid for for how many years? This is what they do here. So, you know, I'm like, just stop, stop, stop. Audrey Davis met her fate in the Gambia. We don't know how she died, but Anja Africa somehow got sick. And I saw this GoFundMe. Somebody sent this to me, I think a day or so before she died. And she was in the hospital. She wasn't responsive. She passed away. Her son, I don't know if he had to come from New York City or the States to come and get the body, but it was a big mess. Some people believe that, you know, A, she might have had a stroke or she could have been poisoned. But this is like the fifth lady in Gambia from the African American community are from the larger diaspora who has passed away in Gambia. This is not to throw shade at anybody from the Gambia. I know that anybody can die anywhere. You can die in the States. I mean, there was a big shooting at the Kansas City Super Bowl parade. We know that there are shootings that happen at colleges and everything like that. This is not to scare you from the Gambia, but it should put you on notice. It should make you become alert. And if you're a lady that is traveling to the Gambia by yourself, you 
should really think about that very seriously. You should probably only do so if you're a married woman or if you're a woman about to get married. That's the one thing I can say, because I know people are gonna hop in the comments and say, hey, you know what? Nothing's happening to me in the Gambia. Everything's okay for me. But that doesn't mean that everything won't be okay for someone else. And we have to really be honest here when we talk about our positioning in African countries. Now listen, stop the show. I love Uganda. I live and work in Uganda. I am not going to leave Uganda. But there are there is a certain way that I move in Uganda. It's a certain things that I, I go by and I keep myself to myself to a certain extent and I shield certain things around me so I don't meet certain implications. Now, I'm not saying that these people do not do that, but you still have to realize that as much as you are back on the motherland, you're still a foreigner. That is going to be the case. All right. There's opportunities here. There's a lot of things you can do here. There's great Great things happening. But remember, you are a foreigner. And I keep telling y'all this. I keep seeing so many sisters, you know, that come, they're older, they get involved with a younger, usually broker man, and they don't know what they're getting into. And of course, they end up taking care of the guy. And they could be in cases where they're abused or something happens to you. You don't really know what you're dealing with. And like my brother Dinah Samir says, and I always tell you this, wealthy guys in that country, they're already taken for the most part. There are not many men that's just hanging around Africa that can just really provide for a lady on an American standard. If you're an older lady, you're 30, 40 year old lady, a lot of the guys that you would be interested in that have money are already gone, all right? You can kind of forget about that. So you have to come in mind and understanding that, you know, like I said, you can be followed in certain places. People can try to target you. They know that you can live alone. And of course, as a woman, you could be considered a weaker link. That's just how it is. And don't try to say that I'm hating on you or I'm hating no women because again what is your family gonna say if you come back dead or are, are really hurt they're gonna want you to make sure that you can come back and see your family right that's exactly what i'm trying to do so guys take heed take heed to what's going on in these places take an understanding ask people what's going on in these places because i don't want you to become the next victim so guys it's your boy Shay duke jackson back here on kangana subscribe hit the bell we're out <laughs>